All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. I'm a little sick today, so AJ's going to be doing the bulk of the talking. Um, but we're still here to uh, almost celebrate a win. It was a draw, unfortunately, ultimately, uh, which should have been a win, uh, if I'm being honest. When you play against a team like DC, when they're kind of spiraling, you got to be able to clean up easy points from them. But unfortunately, we were not able to do that. And uh, yeah, uh, everyone give massive props to Michael for doing this while he got COVID. Uh, I don't know if you actually wanted anybody to know that, but uh, sorry about that. But it's okay. uh, I'm in yeah. quarantine, don't worry. Exactly. He's in quarantine and yeah, he is powering through for you guys and it's incredible. I mean, that's he is the definition of a trooper and a warrior. So definitely uh, massive props. Give him all the love. Give him a... Uh, what's your favorite number? What's your favorite ten. number, Michael? 10. Spam 10 in the chat. <laughs> Let him feel the uh, the L-O-V-E. But um, yeah, this is uh, a very, very fascinating match in terms of following up that 5-2 win at home. Uh, but before we get into... Uh, the reactions, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here. And as well, check out our Patreon that is revamped. And we've got lots of fun tiers going on, including being able to guess, or maybe not guess, but being able to uh, contribute to what the Wheel of Forfeit, those slices, can be. So... That will be fun. Uh, we tonight have more uh, <laughs> spicy shenanigans. So uh, that will be great for my uh, very unfortunate bathroom trip in the morning. But I'm not thinking about that. But anyway, yeah, so we we have all that to look forward to. But this match, yeah, I think a lot of people were looking forward to it. And... Yeah, it left a little bit to be desired after probably the first 20 minutes. First 20 minutes, we were running the game through Saba Lapsanitze. He, uh, yeah, he was everywhere. He just made everything happen. And uh, it's probably not a surprise that in this midweek match when there was a little bit of... Uh, not only rotation, but uh, yeah, you, you see guys that... Yeah, probably feeling the sea legs a little bit, uh, especially those that went on international duty, which we had a good number of them. But yeah, you saw the new guys uh, in terms of into the starting 11 definitely look a lot more lively, a lot more sprite. Uh, Saba, of course, uh, came in for Mascara and then Silva. He was uh, benched in favor of Tyler Wolf, the goal scorer from last match as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a yeah, very, very interesting match that, uh, you know, uh, I think with more control, we probably would have saw out the match. But uh, Tiago Mata, I think you saw the fatigue. You know, he was trying to push through. And a good number of the starters really played... A lot of minutes in this match, uh, which, yeah, looking forward to CF Montreal this weekend. You have to wonder how much rotation is going to happen then, too, because, I mean, yeah, you know, Yakumakis, as well as Thiago Mata, they both pretty much played the entire match. So it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Like, uh, if we look tired in this match, it's gonna. We're gonna have to really blow away a team in the uh, the first half uh, on Saturday. But yeah, you know that uh, that first half, Sabalov Zanitse, he's uh, yeah, just doing everything. He uh, you know outlets on the right, playing combinations with Lennon, as well as holding up the ball almost centrally, and yeah, his goal really well taken, uh, which was. Wolf winning a ball, uh, forcing a turnover, and crossing in a really, really good ball. And Sabalap said each day he hits a first time. 
uh, kind of finessed and uh, into the bottom left corner. Just like this man, uh, he's got two assists and a goal in his last uh, two matches. So he is streaking for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of crazy the world of difference he is between uh, he himself and uh, Luis Adarujo. It's just night and day. This is what Adarujo was supposed to be like. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Saba's taking shots with his right and his left, and. They're not really that bad shots. I mean, you know, the uh, the left-footed shots are probably significantly less uh, power, but he's placing them, and definitely didn't see that from uh, from Adaruju. But uh, yeah, and as well, Ajani Fortune, Jay Fortune, uh, played for Mateo Susetu in this match, and yeah, he looked like uh, very much up for it as well. Gave a lot of good energy. Did get a yellow, and yeah, you know, uh, in the sense that Mateo Sosetu came on to try to assert some uh, some control in the second half. But uh, yeah, we'll get to that second half in a bit. But uh, I think what's also interesting is Yorgos Yakomakis, he is on yellow card accumulation watch. He basically, his next yellow, he will miss the next match. Uh, he's got essentially still four games to essentially try to avoid that yellow. He, uh, he definitely, he made some, uh, some fouls today that I was like, okay, you know, maybe he's just going to do it. And, uh, you know, since we have our, our backup striker in, it'd be a kind of perfect time. So he doesn't miss, miss like a really crucial match later on in the season. You know, hopefully not like, uh, where he misses, decision day or something so i think it's pretty important that uh maybe he does take kind of a yellow and uh yeah maybe he misses a maybe he misses a, an away match or something like that but uh what what do you think about that in terms of uh you know uh yakumaki's you know kind of forcing to get a yellow uh so he doesn't miss a crucial match um i mean i think it's probably fine considering it from what he's been looking like, he might end up getting that yellow eventually. It seems inevitable. Um, <laughs> it's 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 frustrating because you can see he gets frustrated in his games, um, and it seems like the guys who are marking him kind of know this, and they try and get under his skin, and they play mm -hmm. him very physical. And like every game now, it seems like he has, you know, like a, he puts up a big fit about you know calls not going his way and guys getting away with stuff against him and he seems very pissed all the time so you know that's an easy way then to notice that and go okay just keep poking and prodding this guy and he's gonna keep getting cards so it probably seems inevitable and if you're gonna look for a game for that to happen philadelphia away on october 4th might be good if he gets a yellow in montreal so maybe we just hope he just goes out there and starts dominating people against montreal Right. And he's got to have some tact a little bit with it, too. I mean, it'll be kind of interesting how he actually gets the yellow. He'll he'll have to do maybe some, like, more time-wasting stuff or, you know, maybe, you know, uh, preventing a, a free kick from, you know, uh, going early or at least going uh, in the regular a lot of time. And so, yeah, maybe it's something like that because yeah, if it's a little bit violent, uh, yeah, we don't want him to miss three matches. So yeah, we have to, <laughs> he's got to be pretty pretty careful there uh, to kind of do it right. Which uh, if you've ever seen Sergio Ramos uh, or uh, really PK, like those two guys are really good at uh, yeah, just getting a garbage yellow and. Uh, yeah, really being strategic with those uh, with those uh, yellow card accumulations. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get into the chat a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can pull up at the same time, or try. I'm trying to save your voice if uh, you know if you need to. But I don't uh, know if your camera will go off if you do that. But we can try. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, can I will. Read a couple, though. Uh, okay. Alex yeah. Winberg says, 
Um, disappointed not to get all three points. Fortune, Salva, Tyler impressed in the first half. Um, Ellie Aldrich, Aldrichter, Aldrichter says second half was dead from Atlanta. The Alex also says if DC had any semblance of an attacking threat, we'd be walking away with zero points. Yeah. Ellie also yeah. says we should play Salva and Silva as our wingers. Yeah, I mean we try to, but you know. Uh, Connor says Benteke was from the beginning of the season. Um, would have had a Hattie in this match if he was, I guess, from the beginning of the season. Um, mm. Connor also says, uh, I think we're trying to keep it. Yeah, he's just talking to uh, Alex in the chat. Um, Alex says, you know, we're tired when Almada is walking. There was at least one run I saw him pull up for that. He, I think he could have gotten there. Um, Connor says, I think Gigi could do with a midweek break. So wouldn't mind Saturday him getting a yellow. Um, Alex says, Gigi channeling his inner Joseph hitting the ground in this game. Um, Thierry is not match fit yet to replace Gigi. Um, Connor says, I'd start Zonde or Jamal up top. Mm. Well, yeah. Mm. Jamal maybe isn't match, match fit, but he could give you 45 minutes. Um, and Yapro20 says, thoughts on this being the first ever... Uh, draw in Atlanta United versus DC history. No. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, definitely interesting. I mean, yes, DC United in previous years have largely have a, had our number. Uh, we've got, I think, if I... Uh, I didn't look at the, the stats before this match, but I think we've got, like, two games won, apparently, maybe. So, uh, at least... To my recollection, it could be wrong. Uh, you can let us know in the comments below. It. But they posted it on the on the stream, and then I forgot it because my brain is not working. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I think I uh, I missed it maybe. But either way, uh, it's not a lot, and uh, they they largely have our number. And uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, also because Lucho Acosta tends to have our number. But he, of course, no longer is with DC United. But, uh, yeah, we did uh, see uh, another familiar old friend. Uh, yeah, maybe not old friend in Lucho Acosta, but Yamil Assad. He uh, made an appearance in this match and uh, yeah, promptly also took down uh, Tiago Almada. Got a yellow. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's good to see uh, Assad in the... Uh, in MLS and back again, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, this, this team, uh, it's very Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, I think it's, you know, fairly obvious that, uh, we're probably not one of the most consistent teams in the league. We, uh, concede a good number of goals, but we can score a lot of goals too. This is one of those matches where, yeah, we probably got a little lucky, and uh, I think they had, what, DC had 22 shots. Um, I don't know how many are on goal, but uh, that's a lot. That's a lot to concede. Um, yeah, that second half was pretty much all DC United. And, yeah, we just look very much kind of jaded. We look like a team that uh, have been playing a lot of games uh, in a short amount of time. And... It's not necessarily the case, but yeah, I mean, a lot of the players, at least a lot of the starters, have had a lot of travel on those legs, and that just shows you, yeah, it's kind of how MLS is. You just like it's really difficult to win on the road, and so that's just what makes it even more impressive. I believe in 2018 when we had 10 games that we won on the road, so I mean. Pretty incredible, I think, uh, from that period, obviously, in which I think we had a lot more depth as well. And that definitely plays a part in how well you can do. Because it almost seems like it's this. Because, yeah, there are so many games that are those midweek matches. And a lot of times they might be an away match. You pretty much punt those. Like you, you, know, you kind of... Just play your uh, your secondary players, and 
yeah, this match we we started eight out of the uh, the first choice, and yeah, you know, it's like you you have to come out of the blocks uh, strong enough, but sometimes that's the difficulty is sustaining it for ninety, and it's clear, yeah, when we have all our talent on the pitch, it's pretty nasty, uh, but. It is also, we haven't really seen a ton of Saba Lapsenitze and Shonda Silva together on the pitch at the same time. It's a, a little bit where it seems like Gonzalo Pineda is trying to kind of uh, mix and match that uh, throughout the week, uh, when especially there's fixture congestion. So that, yeah, you have one guy who's, uh, you know, can make an impact off the bench, and then another guy. Uh, you know, from the uh, starting off the blocks. Because, yeah, I think you saw that, uh, which match was it? But basically, it was that uh, that match where we couldn't bring on anybody. It was just, we stuck with the, uh, mostly the starting 11. And that was they're Cincinnati. Just with Cincinnati, yeah. We just didn't have any firepower. And it's just like, that, that's something you want to avoid again. Obviously, that was a different, slightly different time in which the uh, new transfers were still betting in. Now they're a little bit more match fit. So, yeah, you know, there's, uh, I think, probably a more possibility that we'll see maybe against CF Montreal where we see both of the wingers start. But I would imagine, yeah, it still might be some time because uh, both of them probably aren't 90 minutes match fit quite yet but uh, but yeah okay let's see uh what else are the chat saying um Maybe. yeah we can also do the uh, the patreon thing in a minute as well um, yes they are saying so yo pro is also saying that actually there's a quite a, i have to scroll back up to catch all these okay um so yeah we had nine wins against six to them I think that's right against DC. I think that's what the standing is right now. Okay. Um, what should we do with Miguel Barry when Tiari replaces him? He's Jeff. He's essentially he's a player that uh, will kill minutes off for you, and uh, especially also if you need a body up front uh, or if you're defending a lead. Uh, yeah, I think you saw though. Machop Chol was favored instead of uh, Miguel Berry, even yeah. just to uh, see how this match. Uh, I mean, obviously a little bit different, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, Yakumaki did come off a little bit uh, kind of near the end of the match, but yeah, you would think, you know, one of the new boys, uh, I mean, new boys, but yeah, Tiara, you know, maybe gets a cameo. I guess he hasn't been. Uh, training well enough to maybe get the cameo and get his debut. So, okay. Fair enough. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Chol, he's been scoring for the twos. Probably has been earning some, some minutes. And I thought he uh, he dealt with, uh, you know, pretty much de the defensive work that he had to do pretty well uh, after he came on. And uh, he was pretty much helping patrol the midfield while uh, Tiago Amada uh, just sat up uh, top being the outlet, so uh, yeah, I think you know you have uh, you, we have some answers to some questions, especially when uh, you know it gets uh, into some kind of I guess difficult moments. Which yeah, it was definitely a difficult moment uh, in that second half when, whew, yeah, we had the the penalty that was called, and then it was. Not a penalty uh, after it got checked twice. Kind of ridiculous, a little bit actually. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, like, yeah, the player was offside, but also a lot of people held qualm to whether it was actually a handball or not. I feel like it, it, it would have been harsh, and it was harsh uh, when Abram got the yellow. And. Yeah, it's just one of these, like, how much reaction time did he really actually have? It's, yeah. It, it is a little outstretched, but 
I feel like he's not trying to, you know, prevent a goal. I think he's trying to preserve his body parts. So I think, you know, from it, it really there wasn't that much distance between the shot and uh, and his ability to evade. Mm-hmm. I think he was honestly trying to, but if it were, that would be that would be two penalties conceded through handball by Luis Abram in two consecutive matches. Thankfully, it wasn't. But it's a little bit worrying that he's putting himself in those positions. So that's yeah, definitely not something that uh, we want as a trend to continue. But uh, yeah, so Abram's probably yeah he's he's got to watch himself a little bit, and uh, yeah, you know, really try to kind of reel that in. Yeah, it's not uh, not something that we want to see too much, uh, obviously. Uh, but we do have another center back waiting, uh, chomping in the bit, I'm sure, in the wings. Who uh, yeah, Parata did come on later, and uh, yeah, played in the middle of a three. We eschewed pretty much having Moyamba in the midfield. Uh, but, you know, I think it makes sense. Just because, yeah, he's played a lot of minutes in the last four or five days. So, but, uh, but yeah. So let's uh, let's show the Patreon uh, all-star starting lineup. Uh, give some shout-outs to the boys that have joined us on the Patreon in the uh, starting 11 tier and higher. So, yeah, here you are. Know. Let me know if you guys can read this. Make sure the font is big enough. But here's our three uh, members of the starting lineup this week. Um, thank you very much um, to Andrew, Gavin, and Ariel. Really appreciate you guys contributing at the starting 11 tier and up um, to be uh, to land a spot on our starting lineup. Mm hmm. And ain't that thing sexy? Shoot. <laughs> Plus, with the names, yeah, much, much love to all three of you guys. And uh, yeah, if you want to see your name on this uh, all star starting lineup, then join us on the Patreon. And uh, yeah, uh, check out which tiers are, uh, you know, are standing out to you. And, uh, you know, join us on that but uh but yeah okay so uh what is it drew that's joining us that's right let me uh hit him up okay and yeah i mean i think we might keep it a little short on this stream today uh just because michael obviously he's worse for wear a little bit with uh you know with that and hopefully he can get some rest and uh really heal up very very soon but okay we got a Tampa Bay Lightning fan all right hello hello how's it going Andrew welcome not bad welcome welcome and uh yeah you know love it that you've joined us on the Patreon much love we appreciate you so much no problem uh but yeah man uh let us know your thoughts on the match pretty flat game honestly it started pretty well in the first half probably the first 20 minutes it had pretty good pace we controlled the play pretty well and then i feel like we almost sat back too much and let dc have possession of the ball and it basically killed the flow of the game all the way to the end of the game we were basically hanging on by our fingernails to the end. Uh, yeah, it's something that's, uh, you know, we're, we're that team that is exciting to watch for neutrals. Fantastic for everybody else. But yeah, we uh, we are that, uh, that club that doesn't really control matches right now. We, uh, you know, it's that's that kind of ethos that Darren Eels wanted us to play with, which is, yeah, win games 4-3. And, but what we really needed here, unfortunately, was probably some Franck de Boer control to just see out the match. But uh, what, what do you think in terms of, uh, 
what you saw tonight, maybe we should have done differently in order to maybe get the three points instead of uh, walking away with just the draw. And did I lose? Oh. Did I lose Drew? Yeah, his video is frozen. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know if that was just for me, but... All right. Pose the question to him, but... Uh... <clears throat> We'll wait on it. We'll wait on it. No, we'll I'll maybe answer to uh, figure out his internet, and then um, I'll read another okay. uh, piece of chat real quick. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, <laughs> Yopro says, "So thoughts on Tyra Wolf having more goals than Lorenzo Insigne?" <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that Toronto team is as dysfunctional as they come. So, I mean, it's just jokes. Like, yeah. Tyler Wolf, that's the thing. Tyler Wolf has an eye for goal. He's he's like, he's kind of that second striker. He's essentially what Eric Lopez wanted to be. And, yeah, I mean, Tyler Wolf has uh, been a difference maker coming off the bench or... Uh, yeah, you know, coming into the side, making spot starts. Uh, he's got, he's got a future, I think, in this league. If he can figure out his first touch a little bit better, if he can uh, work on some other aspects of his game in terms of uh, kind of more maybe the short game, the combination play, because uh, yeah. It, like, while he did have a really good cross tonight, he's not really known for his passing. He's not really known for, you know, uh, his ability to uh, kind of play through lines and whatnot or anything like that either. Like, that's not really his uh, his game. He's more of, he's an energy guy. He's, uh, you know, a guy who can uh, find the back of the net, a little bit of poaching ability too. So, yeah, I think... Uh, you know he's he's got he's got a future here. I think if he can uh, figure out some of those those other aspects, and he can make us really potent. I think uh, in terms of as that depth in those cup games, and so uh, yeah, you know I think that, that's what it is right now. It's like okay, we, yeah, we we really want to probably uh, keep pushing on to get a home playoff spot. This result doesn't exactly get us there, but um, yeah, we pretty much have in the next, well, before this match, uh, we had four games to pretty much solidify a spot in the playoffs. So if we won tonight, we would have clinched a spot in the playoffs. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. We'll essentially have three more chances uh, to at least make the playoffs, but obviously I think we want to be uh having a home match because for these obvious reasons you see here dc united not that tough of a team but on the road it's just never easy in mls so it's just uh yeah you know we have to pretty much get a home playoff spot because like we're one of the most anemic on the road yeah so we need to do everything and throw throw the entire uh, I, I feel like it's this. It's like we we were obviously playing for the the draw in the second half because we were hanging on. We yeah, you know, didn't have the uh, the wherewithal nor the energy, I would say, to push for a winner. Uh, and before that, yeah, you know, before they leveled it, we were kind of hanging on then too. So yeah, I think this. This is that game where you just see it often in uh, in MLS, and you've seen it from us a lot too. It's just we're just constantly, uh, you know, giving away late goals. We didn't have the energy tonight to uh, to get one of those last minute goals. And I think it was because, yeah, I think you you saw that uh, like DC they. They were just doing everything uh, in their power to, uh, yeah. I mean, they were still pressing high. They were like late in the match. DC was a team that knew 
that they needed to fight for their lives. They they knew they yeah. needed to get a W in order to mm. solidify, you know, to get in the playoff conversation. So this yeah. was like an animal with their backs up against the wall. So this was yeah. probably the best DC can can do against you. Right, and they were physical. They were, uh, yeah, really getting up in our face as well. Uh, and they were they were mixing it up, you know, in terms of their types of chances. They weren't just lumping it forward. Like when we pressed well, yes, they did that. But yeah, they were they were playing through us a little bit as well. And so, yeah, um, <laughs> I think there's a lot to uh, to learn from uh, from this uh, this match. And uh, yeah, hopefully the defense and the midfields and uh, yeah the forwards they all take something from this match of like, okay, yeah, this, it's not all like, uh, it's not all like just where, okay, we got this because we, we have a uh, superior talent. Like it's just, yeah, this, uh, the margins are very, very slight, especially on the road in this league. So yeah, we could barely get GG any service whatsoever this game. Um, Connor yeah. wants to know, do we know how long Jamal's contract is for? I believe that's through 2024. Um, Alex says, when I saw Parada coming on, I knew Pineda was trying to scrape the one point. Yeah, um, Parada played well during this game. Um, Jack Dickens says, we just seem to lose all composure second half, but it's better than zero points. Yep. Baraka says, expected better, but we'll take what we can get. Elliot Beaven says, Saba has scored more goals than Aruju this season. That's also awesome to know. Alex said, I'm not for bashing any of our players, no matter their performance, but I was praying Miguel Berry wasn't going to be subbed on this match. Well, you got your prayers answered. Um, Yo Bro says, should we loan Barry out? Elliot says, Barry is leaving after this season. Um, Yo Bro also has thoughts on Etienne moving to Atlanta United too. And I'll huh. stop there for a minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll get to each of those. Um, so we'll go in reverse order. So uh, Derek Etienne... Yeah, he obviously can't see any minutes right now, and I think that's for good reason because he was given ample chances, and he didn't prove much of anything. He uh, pretty much laid an egg in most of the matches, and while he gave some effort, there just wasn't really much uh, that he was obviously doing. And uh, you see the market difference. Uh, Shauna Silva, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's incredible the uh, the levels of that and i mean if you look at because yeah eafc uh they came out with their you know the new game for the season and you saw some of the uh, the ratings as well and you see like mascara and shonda silva and etienne well etienne has a higher rating than uh both of those guys and he's not seeing any of the minutes um yeah, I mean, it's kind of... They go with, like, a coefficient, I believe. But, yeah, that that's that stuff doesn't really make too much sense. Uh, it shows you kind of... EFC probably don't really have the, uh, the correct kind of, I guess, uh, up-to-date kind of uh, trending, uh, I guess, stats on each of these players because, yeah... You see, it's market difference between that. Etienne probably should be in the low 60s, probably, on his form. But uh, either way, anyway, uh, Miguel Barry, I don't think you loan him out. Um, he's going to take him. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, he's not on a high contract, but it's just one of those things where, why? Like, why Why even bother at this point? Like, it's, uh, one, the, the, transfer, the transfer window is closed. Um, I mean, if you're talking about loaning him to Lane United 2, I don't think you try to stunt the growth of any of the other players, so uh, I don't think that's important. They're already, unfortunately, missing the playoffs uh, in Lane United 2, so yeah, you play the kids, you give them minutes, you let it be a proving ground, which is what it is. So, yeah, Miguel Berry, I think he's, yeah, he's just depth. He's uh, someone that if you need to kill off a game, uh, GG's, uh, you know, need some rest. 
I think that's what it is. And uh, I just probably don't think too much harder than that because at this point, I think we found our second uh, b- or backup striker, our second choice striker. And so hopefully uh, this guy can actually get a game. But because uh, we're running out of games very, very, very quickly. And uh, yeah, we have no idea if he's actually even worth it. So, you know, we'll find out. But um, those are the two main questions. Was there another question? Um, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. No, Strong says... Uh, He's already dead, so he's just coming in to say goodnight. Take care. Appreciate you from coming. By. I mean, you know, he's in for everyone. He's in Greece, so he always stays up to watch games with us, and it's it's amazing. He I takes mean. time out of his life to do that because it's in the middle of the night for him. Um, Elliot Beaven says, heard Messi got injured in the Toronto game. I saw that on ESPN FC. They just said it looked like him and Jordi Alba were subbed off in the first half from apparent injuries. Yeah, 37th minutes. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, at least I guess they all got to see Lionel Messi, I guess, still. So, uh, good for her, the Toronto fans. But, uh, yeah, really bad for Inter-Miami because, yeah, at, the, at this point, because uh, they were definitely pushing for the U.S. Open Cup. I mean, it, it could be precautionary. We'll see. But if... Messi is injured that severely puts a really really uh difficult time for them in the u.s open cup yeah uh, i agree but you know uh not our problem so <laughs> yeah i mean if, if miami shows up with what they showed up in atlanta with houston houston has a chance to beat them yeah i agree to agree because yeah it's one of those where uh i think inter miami they played decently well against us, uh, you know, to start off, but I think we just had too much well, firepower. I mean, I don't think they played that well. I mean, you know, both of their, their one goal was a hero ball goal. wasn't the product of any kind of, like, working <laughs> system they had going on. And the penalty kick, similarly, wasn't that, like, wow, here's a great team goal from Miami. So, like, I just don't see that as a replicable system for them um so you know maybe if they want to just keep relying on you know outstanding campana goals that come out of nowhere then i go for it but i don't think that's a winning solution for them right and i think that's what uh was happening in that uh in that match was they realized well yeah i mean if you don't have Jose martinez on the pitch as well as i mean yeah it's like campana is still growing into his game uh, but i think that first 30 minutes against us they played pretty well they they in that sense they had the better chances they of course were leading uh they pressed us well they pressed us high and like we looked a little slow out of the blocks and so i think it's one of those like if they can sustain that for longer periods of time and if they can do that against Houston I think they'll fare better but yeah no Messi it's yeah like we see the type of club that they are they're languishing in you know 14th but they can beat up on Toronto so you know they're uh man Toronto it's it's wild how uh how far that's fallen a complete but, implosion um, Alex Winberg says Pineda preaches the best way to take hold of the game is to keep scoring. But like Andrew said, we just sat back in the second half. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that was because Pineda recognized that we didn't have anything left in the gas tank. So it's the mm-hmm. only real viable way to go. Um, mm-hmm. So. Because, yeah, it's this. We. I think it is a. Uh, Going to be an issue. Uh, if we cannot replicate even just a fraction of what Tiago Mata can do uh, when he's fatigued, he looks jaded, uh, and yeah, you know, in this like fixture congestion. So it's like 
Ooh, you know, it's like if uh, if he's nullified, well, we're pretty much, yeah, we we need all the uh, all the creators. We need all the uh, the best players on the pitch at the same time, and it's just not. No, we, we haven't been able to do that quite yet. But we do uh, have Drew. Andrew back. Yeah, he was able to. Yeah. You know, difficult. So I imagine you're in Florida because you're a Tampa Bay fan. No, I'm in Georgia. You are? Okay. Because I was yep. going to say, did you hit by a storm in Florida? Because that seems to be daily. No. I don't, I don't know what was going on. I was losing connection and spent about five minutes trying to figure out what was going on. But oh. I'm back. All right. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. But, uh, yeah, so I think my question was, uh, yeah, before you left, it was, uh, well, in terms of our second half and, you know, we're... You know, we, we didn't have very much control and whatnot, but would you have done anything differently to try to get the three points? Probably not. I think we tried to press high and hit the, hit them on the counter um, in the second half. I think it would have been better to try to control the ball a little bit more and just... I hate to say play tiki taka, but that would have been the best best strategy for seeing out this game and holding on to the one goal lead and maybe getting a second. But we brought on Mascara, who is very much somebody that likes to hit on quick counters and something like that. But honestly, we scraped away with a point, which with how most of our players looked with tired legs I was, Almada was I barely noticed him half the game and that's probably from fatigue throughout the season so yeah it was very much yeah I mean it's uh, I think the like I mentioned at the top of the show the sea legs are really hitting these guys right now and uh, yeah it's it's exactly what I think uh yeah, I was mentioning earlier is that, yeah, the control was what was needed. The best form of uh, defense sometimes is to just keep the ball away from your opposition. And, yeah, I don't think we had the technicians probably to do that, to uh, to really make sure that we took care of the ball. Because, yeah, we just uh, we just kept giving them chance after chance. And uh, Braguzan, I think he was dealing with it pretty decently. He's much maligned, but uh, what's what's been your opinion of him this season? Early on this season, I was calling for mm-hmm. him to be uh, benched, honestly, because I watched some of his early games this season, and I played goalie as all my life, and watching some of the footwork and the reading of the game that was going on with him it was very worrying but as i've seen this the rest of the season he's been solid and he looks back to his old form and has held down the fort very well especially these past couple games he's been a brick wall back there again yeah, no, his form has definitely gotten a lot better. Uh, I think it was pretty much when, I forget which team we played, but yeah, you can see did some silly goals and he essentially realized, okay, yeah, oh shit, I need to uh, to <laughs> perform a lot better. Otherwise, uh, these two other veteran goalkeepers are going to take my place. And so, uh, yeah, he's definitely been better. I think that his... His issue uh, right now is his reaction time and his uh, shot stopping ability has pretty much uh, father time is catching up and uh, yeah because he's still got control of the box he's still uh, you know in terms of corners in terms of set pieces he's got pretty good control of uh, where everybody needs to be it's just man like uh, do you feel like the shot that he uh, gave up and conceded uh, for a goal? tonight was he able to do anything about it no that that was a tough shot it was almost pinpoint perfect shot so and it's through traffic it 
not much he can do about that one. So I don't give him any blame on that. Um, the one per one thing I did see on that goal was I noticed Silva kind of let off a tackle that he could have played in there and mm -hmm. gave him space to take that shot. And yeah, yeah. it's a great point because yeah, it was uh, I believe pretty close to the box, if not like on the edge of the box. And I think, yeah, he's probably a little reticent to give up any too much contact, but it is, yeah. Like there were multiple guys around the uh, the shot taker and yeah, it's just- Robinson who yeah. backed off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's one of those like, yeah. Uh, Braggers, I agree. Like he couldn't have done too much about that shot because uh, the guy just got too deep into it, and and <laughs> he was uh, shielded off from being able to see exactly when the ball was struck. Yeah, he just he saw he dove pretty much when he was like almost in the net, and so it's just what it is. But um, yeah, I think he handled himself pretty well for most of the other chances and positioned himself well, so that it looked like it was an easy save for for some of those. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, Gonzalo Pineda, in terms of the substitutions tonight, do you, did you agree with all of them? Like, did, uh, did any of them perplex you? Uh, the Mascara one was a little weird. I would have kept Saba on and brought in Silva and basically tried to use those two very attacking wingers. Rosetu, that's that's a smart sub. Fortune is first start, and I can't even remember. The last time we played DC was the last time he started, and he hasn't... He didn't look horrible, but he definitely looked like he hadn't started in a while. But other than that, the Chol sub... I understand it. He was taking off uh, Yako and wanted to have some more defensive solidity and push Mitchell back into the midfield, which worked out to see out the rest of the game. So I didn't see any problem with at that point in the time, at that point in time, just trying to seal out the game and moving to a back five. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's uh it, it did the job. Uh, you know, it wasn't sexy. We didn't uh, push for the winner, but I think, yeah, you're right. It's uh, definitely that type of match where we just had to kind of escape and deal with... Against uh, DC. Well, well, <laughs> yeah. Against DC. <laughs> yeah. But, uh. but, like, I think if there's a match that's exemplary of MLS, this is it. This is <laughs> just... Like, yeah, you, you just make some teams, when they're at home, look like world beaters or at least, you know, to a degree of, yeah, just shot after shot. We, I I hate these type of matches, honestly. And, like, it's, <laughs> like, I'd rather, I'd rather lose 1-0 to a degree uh, from, like, a fluke goal than see my team just have to hang on shot after shot i don't know maybe i'm i'm a i don't know <laughs> i don't know what that makes me but uh yeah it's just you know it's it's heart-wrenching seeing like every shot it's like oh it's a pretty good shot oh my god that was very close yeah. oh that's that's way too close <laughs> so yeah it's uh it's one of those yeah i don't, I don't know what to call myself but yeah I might not be the only one. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so let's get your three stars of this match. Uh, I got Saba as first star. Great goal. Great play, honestly. Started off by Wolf there. Great tackle to win the ball and then laid in a perfect cross to Saba. So that's the first one. And then, honestly, I go with Abram and Robinson. They played a solid game at the back line held everything together i can't blame them too much for the goal on that one so but other than that they didn't lay a foot wrong so those are the three stars all right 
they largely put Benteke in their pocket. I mean, they uh, yeah, a lot of aspects where Miles Robinson was bodying Benteke off the ball, and it was lovely. I was like, okay, all right. I mean, yeah, Benteke is a unit, but I mean, yeah, yeah like I, uh, I was saying in the chat that I not many guys can make Robinson look small, and Benteke is able to do yeah. that. Exactly, <laughs> and it's not like his own. He did, he did. It's not like Benteke is, like, you know, wide. He's just, he's he's a big unit, and, yeah, it's a, he's a tough customer to, to deal with, but they largely, in part, dealt with it. Uh, Sands maybe a couple chances where he got a free header. Yeah. That he probably didn't put it's away, like but. Free header to, on, like, a corner, but that's, a, that's about it. Yeah. In which case, yeah, it's like, Benteke, he's always going to get, one or two in a match just because of you know his sheer will his size all that but uh yeah we we're able to keep him off the uh the score books that's yeah, definitely key so i agree uh but uh yeah so final thoughts on this match not the result uh, i was looking for but we scraped away with a point on the road which earlier in the season wouldn't have happened so I, it's good to at least get a point and we're at least keeping points going into the final stretch of the season here and hoping to get home home playoff games here which would be amazing yeah no it's a great point it's uh it's still momentum and uh yeah definitely every result is needed uh especially on the road and so fully but uh drew thanks so much for your time man and uh yeah you know first time coming on love it love it love it and so uh yeah uh if you want to come on again in the future uh, definitely let us know and i'm losing my voice as well thank you for having me on absolutely man have a great rest of your nights talk to you soon too bye see ya that was i really appreciate him give him some love in the chat if you see him in discord say hi um so we have a, a bunch more questions to get to, and then we can get to AJ's um, forfeit <laughs> before we head out. So Connor says, I have a question on squad selection. Would you rather have gone you know, full squad, your full strength squad, and try and win early or start a lot more rotation and see how the match plays out and decide kind of like tinker later on in the match? Yeah. Uh, obviously, what Gonzalo Pineda did was uh, tinker, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's tough to say because if you start your strongest eleven on the road, you run the risk of doing exactly what we did against Cincy, but uh, at home, where you don't have any weapons off the bench, and uh, yeah, our our bench is a lot deeper now, but. I don't think everyone is super match fits. I think I would do that if you really absolutely need the points. Uh, I think it was maybe a little too early to do that. So I agree with not doing that in this match. All right. So Connor says Edwin should have 90 pace with the AFC ratings um, (laughs) and a four in everything else. Alex says, do you guys see any likelihood of Joseph returning down the road considering he's having a lot of difficulty to replicate his form from the Atlanta United days? I think there's a possibility. Uh, I think, yeah, maybe after he... I can see him playing in Mexico or Brazil. Uh, you know, I don't know if he would continue in MLS. Maybe he would. Um, yeah, because, well... <laughs> There's only a couple of Florida teams, and uh, yes, while well, his uh, new found family are, uh, you know, living in the southern Florida area, yeah, I don't see him playing for Orlando anytime soon. So, uh, yeah, I think he probably goes abroad. Uh, but he's not so, going back to Atlanta. Yeah, I think if he does, it's a little bit later in his career like a swan song as a backup striker where he's like willing to be a backup striker. Uh, Um, would you, would you want him back? I think as a backup striker, I think I would. Yeah. 
Um, just like if, uh, well, yeah, I think it will be interesting to see how Miguel Miron's uh, career kind of progresses or ends up because obviously he doesn't have the old man skills. So, you know, he would have to be, I think, upping his technical ability, which while it's like really good for MLS, like it's uh, obviously not uh, strong enough in uh, the Prem where he's, you know, lighting up the league with his technical ability. Uh, I think he's more of a, a guy that, you know, with his pace, with his work rate, and that doesn't exactly age the best either. So, uh, yeah, I think if Joseph Martinez, it's like, yeah, kind of one of those uh, kind of maybe a half year or uh, a full year of him uh, when he's about to retire, maybe. Yeah. Uh, why Abram over Parata, you think? Mm. I think it's because he's left-footed. He's able to play the ball a little uh, quicker, allow us to play uh, through the lines quicker as well without that extra touch. Parata also, uh, I think, was a little bit more tempestuous and a little bit more... Uh, I think was a little wild with his uh, his defensive marking, and uh, Luis Abram has been a little bit more uh, sure-footed, and uh, yeah, making less mistakes. I feel like because uh, Parata, I think he's missing his marker a lot, or you know, having to last ditch tackle a lot. And uh, yeah, I think yeah, while he's still think, good with his head, but I think that good. comes down to Parata just being like a, yeah, I think he's like a better physical player. I uh, think he's more mm-hmm. athletic than Abram, but I think Abram, like you were hinting at is more cerebral. And I, I very much believe that, you know, if you play smart and you put yourself in good positioning, you can make up for and exceed a player who has just way more physical ability than you. I mean, absolutely. So, mm-hmm. um, so for Michael me, Parker, the, yeah. the prime example. Exactly. Um, so like while Parata is good in terms of like energy and physicality and height too, of course, um, I think, you know, having someone who just knows where to be to break up key plays and key passing lanes, um, and not lose their man, not get, you know, like head swiveled. And then, you know, all of a sudden the guy blows right by you. Um, I think is is more uh, important to the team at this point. Um, so, but I mean, I'm not upset that Prada is someone that we have, though. You know, um, when we need to have him in those scenarios, I think he's a good guy to have. Um, but I think Abram has won his spot. Yeah, exactly. And uh, whether we keep Miles Robinson or not, I mean, yeah, uh, Juanjo Parata. Yeah, I mean, I think he could be upgraded on, but I think he's still a very solid choice. And yeah. as a third choice back uh, or third choice uh, center back, yeah, I think uh, as strong as probably it could get in this league. So uh, here's a good question. Yeah. Alex says, AJ and Mike, do you see a U.S. call up for Brooks Lennon in the future if he continues his form? I'll just quickly say, mm-hmm. yeah, I could see that. He's been playing mm-hmm. very well. Um, mm-hmm. I think part of the reason he doesn't get call-ups is because he's not playing in a European league. Um, but I think he's, uh, I think he's deserves to at least go to a couple camps. Right. And I think it's this, it's interesting because, uh, Julian Gressel, obviously, uh, now he's a U.S. men's national team player. Uh, they pretty much play in very similar positions as a uh, right wing back or right back, uh, as well. Uh, Paul Areola, he... Obviously not really a right back, but uh, yeah, he and Julian Gressel were pretty much on DC United playing the same position, and uh, he sees some time with the U.S. men's national team as well. So I think Brooks Lennon, it's just a matter of time. I think probably the question on him was his defensive ability, Um, in which case, I mean, yeah, I think he's proven uh, throughout his time in Atlanta that, uh, yeah, while he might get caught out at times because he's too far up, his defensive ability in terms of uh, kind of the using his physicality, um, you know, marking, uh, making sure that crosses don't come in, his defensive awareness, I think it's there. 
that's just uh, really now in a point where maybe he uh, he maybe needs to reel in because I, I think you saw in this match you saw him get caught up field time and time again and he was having to, to track back uh, from a long way and you saw some midfielders uh, pretty much cover for him uh, in the meanwhile. But I think that aided into why they had so many shots against us. It was it was not a not maybe the uh, the the best strategy and to uh, continue to just push up our fullbacks. Yeah, I agree. But it is um, what it is. Ingest one hundred and one says, "What's going on with the defense? Miles looks a little disenchanted." Miles is not on his best form. I would say, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, he, he's doing decently. And obviously he had a really decent game, uh, against Benteke, but yeah, there have been some, some nervy moments at times. And also, yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, when you don't have the, the same players playing in front of you, like uh, basically the right players shielding your defense, uh, it starts to look a little sus suspect a little bit uh, at times. And so you can't really control every single aspect of what happens in front of you. And I think he's he's dealt with most of what he can control. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, Alex Winberg says... With our three with our three keepers having an average age of 35, are you guys worried that we should start investing in our goalkeeper's future sooner rather than later? That is such an interesting question that you brought up because there is that Josh Cohen player that's uh, apparently uh, Cohen's camp accused us of tampering a little bit or uh, essentially with his discovery rights we apparently didn't give him a fair enough offer uh, when, yeah, this young goalkeeper who was doing quite well uh, played some Champions League matches. Um, but, yeah, he's trying to find a new club and he tried to maybe, you know, get a place on an MLS team. But uh, we had his discovery rights. Uh, we pretty much blocked it in the sense of, yeah, we gave him an offer, but he didn't want it. And yeah, it's essentially, he can't play an MLS unless somebody wants to pay for the $50,000 in, uh, discovery right gam or as well, kind of, uh, you know, if there are some other leagues, I mean, he could have been stashed in MLS next pro or on a USL team or something, but uh, yeah, I think obviously he feels like he is a better player than that, than uh, those leagues. So yeah, no, it's a, uh, it, we need to find a younger keeper. That's for sure. Uh, although keepers do age more gracefully, but yeah, I think uh, we need a bona fide shot stopper. We need somebody that can, cause yeah, it's it's apparent that uh, Guzan's lost a step, lost a lost a paw or two in terms of uh, the ability to shop a uh, stop a really really quality shot. But yeah, his positioning is still I think uh, above average, but his shot stopping ability is definitely not. Um, <clears throat> Connor says we have some academy keepers who are coming along really well. Probably we'll mm -hmm. see. We might see a 32 to 34 year old come in in the winter to see us over till they're ready to get a chance. Maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it could be. Um, yeah, if it's something where we go for a Sean Johnson or something, or if we uh, see some market growth from uh, a Justin Garces or you know, anybody else that's uh, coming through the academy. But uh, I would I would assume that uh, any of the academy players still are a ways away. Uh, you know, yes, 
you've seen the likes of Chicago and you and the Revolution uh, kind of bring in young-ish goalkeepers and uh, kind of uh, have bred them to be sold to uh, Premier League sides. But yeah, I don't know if that's going to be like a, a norm. Yeah. That's going to be a thing that every team can do. Yeah. But so. Yeah, that was pretty incredible what they were able to do with those goalkeepers. To see them yep. at like the top flight, the best of the best, like immediately, which is mm-hmm. really incredible. Um, El- uh, Elliot reminds us there are only four more games left, and the yep. light- and um, Drew says we need to keep her bad. Cohen's a great keeper. We should pay whatever he wants. And when you say fifty thousand discovery, like fifty thousand into an MLS club is not that much money. So um, apparently he's not. Yeah, no. He's not rated that highly then, I guess, to these club scouting divisions if they're not willing to just go over like a slight 50,000 bump. Well, it's probably not just the 50,000. It's that they have to pay whatever he's requesting for his salary and whichever. Uh, and will it match the the structure of what that club that's maybe going to pick him up, uh, what they want to do? Like so, yeah. Do they think he's a good enough keeper to make what he wants? And it's also, do the clubs need him? So maybe he's asking for DP money. He could be. I mean, because yeah, he he probably on his CV, he's like, yeah, you know, I play in the Champions League. So okay, pay me. And it's like, you know, uh, I don't know. It's it's also. Kind of having to surmise which clubs in MLS need a goalkeeper, and yeah, I would imagine at this juncture, most of them have at least somebody that they're okay to roll with for the season. Yeah, and so it could be a an off season move, a winter move. Yeah. Um. So that's. Um. I'll look into Josh Cohen. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Take a look yeah. into him. See what you think. Um, he's he's an interesting prospect and story, and I I would be surprised if he's if this is the last time we'll see him in the headlines. Um, so next we can go and also everyone if you want to put in more questions and comments please do so before we wrap things up. Um, we can now go. Do you want to do your forfeit first? Or do you want to do the wheel first? Uh, I'll do the forfeit first, right. and uh, so let's uh, if you could do a poll. You let me know. I think you can. Uh, but we have a couple options. All right. So we've got Volcanic Hot. Uh, it's a Singapore brand. It is What's four, out of, four out of five chilies. What's the Scoville rating? The Scoville rating is not on this, I don't think. Uh, let's see. But it's got a Monda Selection <laughs> Silver Award. And let's see. I'm trying to see about the, uh, the Scoville. Yeah, I, don't, I don't see the Scoville. But there's that. There's the uh, Japanese uh, peppers that I ate last time. So... One of those, but basically, those are the options. All right. So volcanic hot, uh, yeah, volcanic hot sauce or the Japanese pepper. All right. What do you guys? What do you guys think in chat? Which one do you want to see AJ do? <clears throat> There's what is like a tablespoon of liquid versus the, the, uh, the whole pepper. Yeah. So obviously, I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we'll wait for that. We will hit up the the wheel. Mm-hmm. Let's see if I can get this on here. Uh... Oh, man. I need a second to get this going. People saying, "What are we? What are we seeing?" <laughs> trying to uh, 
get the the wheel up on the oh. screen right now, but I'm having oh, trouble okay. because I'm like half asleep right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I think I know how to do it. Now. Yeah, everyone, thank you for the grace because yeah, no. All right, here we go. I don't know if you can tell. I'm I'm also half asleep, but here yeah. we go. <laughs> Either let's see who it's gonna be this week. It's gonna. Ooh, it just AJ again. <laughs> oh my! Is this like the fifth time in a row? It may be. I love I'm it. Outrageous. Loving it. All right. <laughs> I guess it's uh it's getting me back for all the times that it just landed on you for <laughs> yeah. a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, I'm feeling like it's a little more normal now. So that's good. Um, and then let me do the uh, the other one. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, now we'll do the forfeits. Let's see which one AJ has to do for next time. Ooh, eating the food you don't like. Oh. Yeah, that one, and yeah, that one's uh, I think particularly bad for you. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Um, bananas usually for me. Bananas. But yeah that's wild I got, yeah like so i don't have like misophonia but it's like when you when you hear yourself like eating a banana it's kind of really it grates me <laughs> and, uh, it's like a texture thing no like i'm not huge on texture where it's like an issue but yeah like bananas just that you know like that <laughs> Like for some reason, bugs me so much, and then also, I've just been sick of bananas. After, uh, yeah, I used to have like smoothies and bananas uh, a lot at work, and at one point, bananas would just like sit on the desk because I would just be so sick of them. And yeah, so, so everyone's saying the sauce. So they want you to do a the table. Sauce. They want to do a spoon of the sauce. Or whatever. All right. Okay. Well, here we go. So volcanic sauce going down the hatch. All right. Here we go. All right. Was a good I heard the <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, this that, one's all through that didn't look good that didn't look fun <laughs> <laughs> so it's all throat mm. oh yeah breathe in it's uh <laughs> it's like i just became a fire breathing dragon <laughs> mm -hmm. oh the flavor is good though this one's it's one awards. I'm, I'm gonna, uh, it's much better in terms of flavor than the uh, the pepper because yeah, there's actually something to go <laughs> along with it. Yeah, but uh, instead of just like 100% pain, but mm. yeah, there's a reason why I, I do use this on a lot of things. That's why it's so uh, so empty. But mm. like I I recommend this over sriracha. Hundred okay. percent. But salsa picante, volcanica, is the uh, Spanish version of all that. If it's anyone wants to donate for us to get the uh, the hot ones, hot sauces for AJ, let us know. That would be uh, yeah, something I'm, we can. I'm down. Do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So that pretty much is it for the show. Then um, anything mm -hmm. else? You wanted to get to before we head out? Yeah, uh, everybody. Just, yeah, we appreciate you. If you've uh, watched this far on a Wednesday night, uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for spamming the chat. Thanks for, uh, you know, taking care of uh, Michael as well in terms of, uh, yeah, you know, obviously uh, as well, getting those comments and wish him 
a really quick recovery. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. And we will see you in the next video. All right, everybody. See ya.